What is the pleroma? The word pleroma means fullness. Reading now from the Gospel of Philip. Those who sow in winter reap in summer. The winter is the world, the summer is the other age or aeon. Let us sow in the world that we may reap in the summer. Because of this it is fitting for us not to pray in the winter. Summer follows winter, but if any man reap in winter, he will not actually reap, but only pluck out, since it will not provide a harvest for such a person. If anyone becomes a son of the bridal chamber, he will receive the light. If anyone does not receive it, while he is here, he will not be able to receive it in the other place. He who will receive that light will not be seen, nor can he be detained. And no one shall be able to torment a person like this, even while he dwells in the world. And again, when he leaves the world, he has already received the truth in the images. The world has become the age, for the age is fullness for him. This is the way it is, it is revealed to him alone, not hidden in the darkness and the night, but hidden in a perfect day and a holy light. Here the summer is the other age, and for the believers this age is the fullness, but what is the fullness? Reading now from the letter of Peter to Philip from the Nagamadi scriptures, concerning the fullness it is I said Jesus, I was sent down in the body for the seed that had fallen away, and I came down to their mortal model, but they did not recognize me, thinking I was a mortal. I spoke with the one who is mine, and the one who is mine listened to me, just as you also have listened to me today, and I gave him authority to enter into the inheritance of his fatherhood and I took him since he was deficiency he became fullness so the implication here seems to be that those who listen to the word of Christ and are his own will also obtain the joy and fullness of the divine like Christ they will become fullness So this is what is taught in the Bible as well. John chapter 1 and verse 16. For we have all received from out of his fullness even grace upon grace. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22. He also subjected all things under his feet and made him head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills up all things in all. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 And to know the love of the Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of the deity. So quite clearly there the Bible teaches in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19 that we shall have all the fullness of God just as Christ has that you may be filled with all the fullness of the deity or all the fullness of God Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13 until we all attain to the oneness in the faith and in the accurate knowledge of the Son of God to a full grown man to the measure of the stature that belongs to the fullness of the Christ Colossians chapter 1 and verse 19 For it pleased the Father that all fullness to dwell in him. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 Because it is in him that all the fullness of the divine nature dwells bodily. The fullness belongs to the Father. He has shared it with Jesus and us. Since Jesus is dwelling within us, 
it is reasonable to assume that the fullness is to be found within us as well. This will take place in two stages. The first is to manifest Jesus' character, which we call the Christ consciousness, and the second stage takes place in the summer, which we call the other age or the age to come. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19 and to know the love of the Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of the deity. We like Jesus are to be filled with God's fullness. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4 Through these things he has freely given us the precious and very grand promises that through these you may become sharers in the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world through lust. So here we are told that we are to be sharers in the divine nature. We will share God's divine nature. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14 He called you to this through the good news we declare so that you may acquire the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So by listening to the good news, we may acquire or obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Basically this is saying we shall share Jesus' glory. John chapter 17 and verse 20 I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. We are to be made perfect in one, Christ in us, and the Father in Christ. In the age to come, we shall be one with God by sharing his divine nature, and being filled with his fullness. It is not one God in three gods, and three gods in one God, but one deity in a countless multitude revealed in the memorial name and given an account of in the mystery of godliness. One in many and many in one, one deity who is all in all.